Perhaps you've encountered this scenario. While driving, a convoy of bikers clad in coordinated jackets speeds by on their imposing motorcycles. There's a widespread belief that 99% of the time, these are simply passionate motorcycle aficionados. However, there's a whispered 1% possibility that it might be one of the infamous, perilous biker gangs associated with violent offenses and drug trafficking. As a precaution, it's advisable to maintain a distance and avoid potential risks. Number 1. Pissed Off Bastards Originating from California, the Pissed Off Bastards are among the oldest motorcycle clubs, established back in 1945. Though not as expansive as some other biker gangs, they hold significance as trailblazers, setting early precedents for outlaw biker customs. Notably, a former member went on to found the Hells Angels, currently one of the largest biker gangs worldwide. These clubs, including the Pissed Off Bastards, served as outlets for World War II veterans transitioning to civilian life. Many found solace in the thrill of biking, grappling with the ordinary routines of post-war life. Typical of motorcycle clubs, both lawful and outlaw, the pissed-off bastards sport a distinctive three-part back patch on their riding jackets, facilitating easy identification of members. While each club features unique symbols, certain elements in these patches remain consistent across different clubs. For instance, most clubs have what's called a top rocker. This is the text at the top of the patch that shows the club's name. For the pissed-off bastards, the top rocker reads POBOB, which stands for the club's full name. The center of their patch is a blue skull wearing a red bomber cap and a Confederate flag in each of its eye sockets. The third part of the patch are the letters MC, which stands for Motorcycle Club. Many pissed-off bastards, as well as other motorcycle club members, also wear a bottom rocker with text saying where they come from. In the case of the original pissed-off bastards, this patch reads California. An infamous moment linked to the pissed-off bastards is the Hollister Riot. During July 3rd to July 6, 1947, the American Motorcyclist Association, AMA, organized a sanctioned rally for motorcycle clubs. However, the event spiraled beyond the AMA's expectations, with an overwhelming turnout that inundated the small town. Media coverage, albeit sensationalized, amplified negative perceptions, notably a staged photo depicting an inebriated biker drinking atop a motorcycle. While no physical harm befell Hollister residents, reports of biker clashes and risky stunts led to labeling the event as a riot. Despite assertions by the AMA that 99% of bikers were law-abiding citizens, the incident birthed the concept of rebellious outlaw bikers. Biker groups, including the pissed-off bastards, seeking to defy this image of lawfulness, adopted the label of 1% er motorcycle gangs, signifying their exclusion from the AMA's deemed law-abiding majority. In their later history, the pissed-off bastards restructured as the pissed-off bastards of Badu. Presently active in the western and southwestern United States, the true extent of their and other participants' danger during the Hollister riot might have been exaggerated. The event did shift how motorcycle clubs were perceived though. This ultimately led to the formation of many more dangerous 1%er motorcycle clubs. The Blue Angels, Europe's oldest 1%er gang, was founded in 1963 in Glasgow, Scotland, by Alan Morrison and Billy Gordon. Initially rooted in the UK, the gang has expanded its presence into Belgium and Spain, often linked or suspected of criminal activities across these countries. Identified by their distinct back patches portraying a winged skull adorned with a Waffen SS helmet, the Blue Angels feature a top rocker showcasing their club's name, complemented by an MC patch. Many members also display 1% patches signifying their outlaw status. Interestingly, the term blue in their name retrospectively signifies bastards, lunatics, undesirables, and eccentrics, a stark irony considering their far from angelic conduct, as highlighted by the media. In Belgium, their involvement in assaults, robberies, and a conviction for hostage-taking is notable. Notorious for their aggression, an attack by the Blue Angels once left nearly 20 members of a rival gang hospitalized. Their criminal record extends to the UK, encompassing fire bombings, arson, and notorious bar brawls with rival gangs, perhaps one of the more brutal attacks carried out by the Blue Angels. Was an assault against rival nomads bikers. That resulted in several Angels members getting charged with attempted murder. The Blue Angels engaged in a deliberate collision with a Nomads member, forcing him off his bike, followed by a brutal assault on multiple individuals using blunt weapons like a tire iron and a claw hammer. While some gangs may tally a higher casualty count, the Blue Angels' actions underscore their formidable and uncompromising nature. 
Their penchant for perilous methods such as fire bombings and arson suggests a trajectory where fatal outcomes, whether intended or not, wouldn't be unforeseen. Number 3. Headhunters. The headhunters stand out among motorcycle clubs due to their origins as a street gang that later transitioned into embracing the motorcycle club lifestyle. Initially recognized for their violence and exclusivity, the gang strictly limited membership to a mere 30 individuals, considering themselves an elite unit. Evolving into an MC, they adopted customary insignia, featuring a backpatch showcasing a flaming demon skull with twisted bull-like horns, accompanied by a top rocker bearing the club's name in red text on a white background. The bottom rocker typically indicates New Zealand, as the gang operates exclusively within the country. Expanding from their original 30 members, the headhunters now number in the high 200s, although still smaller compared to other biker gangs. Their growth is partly attributed to the assimilation of other motorcycle clubs through a process known as patching over, where smaller MCs merge into larger entities. From their inception, the headhunters were recognized for their willingness to resort to violence. They would engage in street brawls against rival gangs, even before becoming an outlaw biker gang. An infamous act of violence associated with headhunters' members involved the alleged stabbing of a Highway 61 gang leader nine times at a party. Despite the lack of conviction due to witnesses retracting their initial statements, speculation lingers. Some believe these witnesses recanted out of fear of retribution from the headhunters rather than affirming innocence. Instances of headhunters' members being convicted for murdering rivals from the King Cobras, alongside other violent crimes like aggravated robbery, kidnapping, and domestic violence, have marred the gang's history. Additionally, involvement in the production and distribution of methamphetamine further tarnished their reputation. In recent times, the MC has shown efforts toward reform. Initiatives include engaging in community service for local youths and imposing a ban on methamphetamine use among their members, signaling a shift towards organizational rectitude. While it's hard to say for sure if the MC has fully reformed, it is certain that at one point, they were one of the more dangerous biker gangs out there. The Vagos Motorcycle Club, an outlaw biker gang originating from San Bernardino, California, was established in 1965 and has expanded its presence extensively across the United States. Additionally, they've established chapters in international locations like Mexico and parts of Europe, amassing a reported membership of approximately 4,000 individuals. Distinguishing themselves from typical three-part patches, the Vagos patch consolidates elements that are usually separated into one unified design. This includes the gang's name at the top, MC at the bottom, and the Vagos insignia portraying the Norse god Loki riding a motorcycle. Recognizable by their distinct choice of clothing in green, many members dress accordingly, earning the gang the moniker the Green Nation. Unfortunately, the Vagos have a history of involvement in violent crimes, including targeted attacks on members of rival gangs. The Vagos Motorcycle Club's history is marred by a significant incident involving the fatal shooting of the San Jose Hells Angels chapter president. Moreover, gang members have been apprehended for offenses like robbery and kidnapping. However, it's crucial to highlight instances where the Vagos were wrongly accused of heinous crimes. In the case of William Vetton's murder, initially attributed to four Vagos members who received death sentences, later revelations proved their innocence when the real perpetrator confessed. Similarly, in Hemet, California, police allegations about the gang setting booby traps to harm officers turned out to be baseless. The Vagos were exonerated and even won a defamation case against the police department, reminiscent of the Hollister riots' misleading portrayal. The Vagos' tarnished reputation exemplifies the repercussions of a negative image. While they've been involved in violent incidents, they've also unfairly shouldered blame for events they weren't involved in. While it's uncertain if they're as perilous as the media or law enforcement portray, their history denotes a serious organization. The Rebels MC, despite adopting imagery reminiscent of the American Civil War, was established in Queensland, Australia, in 1969. Initially named the Confederates, the club later rebranded itself. Their logo features a Confederate flag as the backdrop, with a prominent foreground depicting the skull of a Confederate soldier. The addition of the skull, attributed to the club's original president Clint Jacks, was a personal preference for symbols like skulls and swastikas. Despite claiming adherence to the law, the club's patch, which includes the 1% logo, suggests otherwise. Membership in the Rebels is stringent, allowing individuals to join only once, if they depart, re-entry is prohibited. Members are strictly prohibited from affiliating with other MCs, likely enforced through various means, given the club's history of firearm stockpiling. Primarily involved in criminal activities related to the drug trade, 
the rebels have been implicated in trafficking stolen goods and vehicles. Armed with a considerable arsenal, they display a readiness to protect their business interests with violence. Notably, their conflict with the Rock Machine Motorcycle Club led to defections and escalated into brawls, culminating in firebombing and assaults. Police intervention even involved driving an armored vehicle into the rebels' clubhouse in a search for illicit items. Number 6. Loners The Loners Motorcycle Club originated in Ontario, Canada, in 1979, established by former members of various biker gangs, namely Gennaro Rosso and Frank Lenti. Since its inception, the Loners have expanded their presence across multiple countries, amassing a global membership of approximately 1,000 individuals. Diverging from the typical simplicity of many MC insignias, the loners boast a complex design for their club's emblem. Their logo features a half-demon skull with horns alongside half a werewolf head. Complementing their primary insignia are patches displaying loners above the logo, an MC patch, and variations including chapter locations or the term forever on bottom patches. Officially portraying themselves as motorcycle enthusiasts disavowing criminal activity within their ranks, the club's history tells a different narrative. Instances of violent crimes, including involvement in notable biker wars against rival gangs, contrast starkly with their proclaimed stance against criminality. One of these conflicts was between the Loners and Satan's Choice, the motorcycle club supported by the Diablos. The Loners found themselves entangled in conflicts, notably with Satan's Choice, backed by the Diablos. Frank Lenti, expelled from the Loners for misappropriating funds, founded the Diablos. Tensions escalated to the extreme during their warfare, resulting in exchanges of rocket launcher fire at each other's clubhouses. A car bombing targeting Lenti further fueled the chaos, leading to Diablo's disbandment and upheaval within Satan's Choice. Eventually, a truce between Satan's Choice and the loners emerged, but only after significant loss of life and numerous injuries. Subsequently, internal divisions fractured the loners into two factions. One faction aligned with the Hells Angels, while the other struck a deal with the Outlaws, setting the stage for the Ontario Biker War. Despite the label of a war, this conflict claimed about three lives but left many bikers injured and numerous club members arrested. While not the largest or most prominent, a group willing to resort to rocket launchers for territorial defense and affiliations with larger biker gangs like the Outlaws underscores their danger. Crossing paths with the loners is not a risk one would willingly take. Number 7. Pagans. The Pagans MC, a one-percenter association primarily based in the United States, traces its origins to Maryland in 1959, founded by Lou Dobkins, the inaugural president. Identified by their distinctive patch featuring the Norse fire giant Surtur wielding a glowing red sword, the emblem is inspired by Jack Kirby's artwork from Journey into Mystery No. 97. Their three-part patch includes the club's name and the letters MC denoting motorcycle club. In their early years, the Pagans aimed for a sense of elevated status, formalizing a constitution that equated the club president's annual salary with that of the U.S. president, then around $100,000. With rapid expansion across states, the club's growth coincided with a shift towards embracing their one-percenter identity, leading to increased involvement in criminal pursuits. Because they were the largest group in the region at the time, the Pagans could expand their influence quickly and with little opposition. The gang became involved in organized crime and racketeering. One member was even arrested with connections to Eugene Giswale, who movie buffs might recognize as being the Pittsburgh connection from the gangster film Goodfellas. The gang has also been known to work with the La Roca crime family, which led to the gang being involved in the assault of an ATF agent as well as the murder of a man named John Hetherington. It's disheartening to note that alongside their involvement in organized crime, members of the Pagans have been linked to violent crimes, including a horrific case in Florida involving the kidnapping, rape, and murder of a 17-year-old girl. The investigation seemed unsolvable until a former Pagans member confessed shortly before his death, suggesting potential connections to more undisclosed violent acts. While the Pagans' reach may not span as far as some international MCs, their concentrated presence in the eastern United States poses a significant danger. Rock Machine MC, founded relatively recently in 1986 in Montreal, Quebec, Canada, holds the majority of its chapters in its home country, with additional chapters in the US and Australia. Initially distinguishing themselves from their rivals, the Hells Angels, by not wearing patches but donning rings bearing an eagle insignia, they later adopted back patches akin to other MCs. These patches included the eagle insignia atop the club's name, the standard MC patch, and in some cases, a fourth patch with their chapter's name. 
Salvatore Cazetta, the club's founder, has had enduring ties with the Rizzuto organized crime family in Montreal, having previously been associated with the SS biker gang, which had been positioned to merge with the Hells Angels. However, when suspicions arose that Hells Angels leaders were embezzling funds from the club, Cazetta opted to create his club, branching away. This move eventually led to clashes between Rock Machine and the Hells Angels. Teaming up with other groups like the Bandidos, they engaged the Angels in what became the Quebec Biker War. When the Hells Angels attempted to dominate Quebec's drug trade, local clubs, including Rock Machine, reacted negatively, orchestrating assaults against the Hells Angels and their allies. The conflict quickly escalated into one of the deadliest biker gang confrontations, resulting in 162 deaths and numerous injuries, including innocent bystanders caught in the crossfire. Tragically, an 11-year-old boy lost his life due to shrapnel from an explosion. The bikers, in their attack strategy, planted around 80 bombs across the city, showing little concern for potential civilian casualties. This conflict wasn't the sole involvement of Rock Machine. They clashed with Australian rebels and faced accusations of individual murders tied to biker rivalries or other motives. During their feud with the rebels, Rock Machine displayed far more aggression, carrying out fire bombings and assaults against their rivals. Police raids on Rock Machine's clubhouse uncovered substantial amounts of explosives, posing a severe threat capable of causing extensive damage and loss of life. There are two distinct phases in Rock Machine's history the club's inception and its reformation in 2008 under Sean Crazy Dog Brown's leadership. The new iteration claims they are merely motorcycle enthusiasts and not a one-percenter motorcycle club. They also assert their stance to expel any member involved in criminal activities. However, law enforcement agencies remain skeptical, viewing the new club as equally dangerous as the original biker gang, despite their proclaimed reforms. 9. Outlaws the Outlaws, a biker gang tracing its roots back to 1935 in McCook, Illinois, began their journey at a bar along Route 66. Since their inception, they've expanded globally, notably in Canada, England, and New Zealand, alongside establishing numerous support clubs. Outlaws members are mandated to ride American-made motorcycles boasting a minimum 1,000 cubic centimeter engine. The current Outlaws patch showcases a grinning skull with red eyes, backed by two crossed red and white pistons reminiscent of the iconic Jolly Roger pirate flag. The patch also bears the inscription Goutlaws at the top, alongside the letters MC, a common feature among most motorcycle clubs. The original patches solely featured a skull, with the addition of crossed pistons at a later point in the club's history. Moreover, the patch has undergone enlargement over time for better visibility from a distance. Despite the common reference to 1% biker gangs as outlaw biker gangs, not all of them are officially affiliated with the outlaws. The outlaws are commonly called the American Outlaws Association, or AOA, to avoid confusion. The outlaws have maintained a long-standing rivalry with the Hells Angels biker gang, often resulting in violent clashes, some involving explosive devices. One of the outlaws' well-known sayings, adios, angels die in the outlaw states, isn't merely a hollow threat, the outlaws have a track record of following through. For instance, in the case of Hell's Angels member Jerry Tobin, several Outlaws members shot and killed him while he was on the M40 motorway in the United Kingdom. Additionally, during the late 1990s, the Outlaws international president, Harry Joseph Taco Bowman, was featured on the FBI's most wanted list for his involvement in various crimes, such as murder and bombing rival gangs' clubhouses. Numerous violent crimes have been attributed to the Outlaws, further emphasizing their dangerous reputation, compounded by their substantial membership. Number 10. Bandidos. The Bandidos Motorcycle Club, boasting an estimated membership between 2,000 to 2,500 across 22 countries, wields considerable influence in various regions. While exact figures remain elusive, they're widely regarded as the world's second-largest motorcycle club, with only the Hells Angels surpassing their numbers. Their distinctive three-part patch consists of a curved yellow top rocker with the Bandidos E emblazoned in red text, accompanied by the letters MC, situated either below or beside the gang's emblem. This emblem, known as the Fat Mexican, portrays a stereotypical Mexican outlaw adorned in a sombrero and poncho, wielding a gun in one hand and a sword in the other. Many Bandidos members also adopt the one percenter patch, wearing it alongside their three-part patch. Established in 1966 in San Leon, Texas, by Donald Eugene Chambers, the club drew inspiration from the lifestyle of Mexican bandits known for their disregard for the law. Embracing the one-percenter ethos, the Bandidos aligned themselves with this rebellious spirit. 
Initially recruiting near Chambers, Texas residents, the club rapidly expanded, surpassing 100 members in its early years, with many veterans returning from Vietnam among their ranks. Both the U.S. Department of Justice and Europol have classified the Bandidos MC as a criminal organization. They sell drugs and weapons and have also been involved in extortion and money laundering. The Bandidos history involves violent clashes, including lethal confrontations with rival gangs. In Finland, conflicts with the rogues gallery escalated into violent altercations. However, the Bandidos aggression isn't solely outward, internal disputes have erupted among members. These disputes often arise from territorial disputes between different chapters or power struggles, leading to violent outcomes, sometimes resulting in fatalities for club members and their families. One infamous incident, the Shedden Massacre in Ontario, Canada, exemplifies internal conflict within the Bandidos. Expelled members of the gang, known as the No Surrender Gang, were lured into a trap by fully patched Bandidos members and executed for their refusal to remove their patches, seen as disrespect to the gang. Such events send a clear message to both Bandidos members and rival gangs, crossing the Bandidos comes with constant threats and dangers. The Hells Angels, globally renowned as one of the largest biker gangs, attract considerable attention from U.S. law enforcement, sporting a three-part patch with a distinctive white top rocker bearing the gang's name in red. Their emblem, credited to former San Francisco chapter President Frank Sadelec, features a death's head adorned with a motorcycle helmet and prominent wings. The third patch typically reads MC in red, matching the top rocker. Debates about the gang's origins involve claims attributing its founding to World War II veteran Otto Friedley after parting ways with the pissed-off bastards or to former Redlands roadrunner Dick White. However, the club's name is confirmed to be inspired by a World War II fighter pilot's naming convention, akin to Air Force unit names of that era. Various law enforcement agencies label the Hells Angels as an organized crime group, associating them with drug and stolen goods trafficking, extortion, and involvement in prostitution. Incidents of homicides typically target rival gang members or those opposing the gang. With an estimated 3,500 members spanning 467 chapters across 59 countries, their extensive global reach contributes to their reputation as one of the most lethal biker gangs. Their dangerous presence led to a permanent ban in the Netherlands, paralleling actions taken against the Bandidos. Other countries have also banned specific chapters, but the Netherlands was the first to completely bar open operations. The Hells Angels' involvement in conflicts like the Nordic Biker War and the Quebec Biker War resulted in fatalities, injuries, and collateral damage, including the deaths of innocent bystanders. Their presence seems to intersect with numerous major biker gang conflicts, cementing their association with these incidents. Though the two gangs have long been rivals and both are dangerous, due to their larger numbers, it seems as though the Hells Angels deserve to be called the most dangerous biker gang in the world. Bikers get a bad rap. While more than 1% may be dangerous, this doesn't mean they all are. However, hopefully, you now know which gangs you should keep your distance from. If you found these guys interesting, wait till you see what we found in this next story on your screen.